Episode 1 of Silo ended with Sheriff Halston Becker meeting engineer Juliet Nichols, who believes that George was murdered. Fast forward two years and Halston has decided to go out and look for the same truth that his wife Allison died searching for. Let's see what he finds outside. Mayor Ruth Johns reads the oath to Halston before he can step outside the silo. Two guys fix their helmets in position, and a sad deputy Sam Marnes opens the airlock, bidding his dear friend a final goodbye. The hatch is separate, and dust and sunlight fall on the face of Sheriff Halston Becker. Juliet Nichols watches, along with her peers, on a screen as Halston walks out onto the wasteland. Halston can see the blue sky, the lush greenery, and the birds in the air. Allison was right. The people need to see what Silo has been keeping them from. He walks over to the camera that is sending the footage to all the screens and cleans the lens. He then starts walking toward Allison's lifeless body. As he approaches her, the poison hits. He is unable to breathe and takes off his helmet. He collapses and somehow drags himself beside Allison before turning still. Halston thus breathes his last beside his wife. Juliet is frustrated and goes down to the generator chamber and starts screaming at the top of her voice. All the work goes to waste. Sam is in his office. After telling his assistant to go home for the day, he opens a note left by Halston. In it, Halston nominates Juliet Nichols as the next sheriff. He visits Mayor Ruth Johns and asks if she has decided who she will make the new sheriff. She hasn't. She has been going through the ledgers maintained by the mayors before her to learn more about the time before the rebellion and what led to it. She fears instability among the people, especially now that there is no sheriff to keep things under control. People have already begun buying hammers and pipes for security. It is curious why Sam doesn't show her Halston's letter. What could be the reason for it? Three months have passed since George's death. This means that it has been three months since Halston's death too. This makes the total duration between Allison's death and that of Halston's two years, three months, approx. Juliet is with Martha Walker at the latter's workshop. She tells Martha that Halston lied to her. George, with whom she was in a relationship, wanted to show her something. Spoilers ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe. One day, after work, she visits George's place and finds a note mentioning a location, and that he has found what he was looking for. Later on, she finds out from one of her peers that George was found dead. It was apparently a suicide. She is in shock and tells Hank that it is murder. The next day, while she is working in the generator room, Hank brings in Sheriff Halston Becker and Deputy Sam Marnes. Hank brings them to the spot where George's body was discovered at 3 a.m. It looked like George had fallen to his death. Halston and Juliet then arrive at the morgue. Halston tells Sam to contact dispatch and see if the porters saw anything in the middle of the night. Halston checks George's wrists to see if he tried to slit them. He asks if she can identify anything by looking at George's body, but she is too shaken to say anything. Sam and Hank arrive a few minutes later. Sam informs Halston that no porters were around that night. Hank tells them that the judiciary will soon be coming for a briefing on the suicide. In the cafeteria, Halston asks Juliet why she didn't get sanctioned by George. He guessed that she and George were together, but how? She doesn't tell him anything but takes him straight to George's place and shows him the note. However, it is torn. Only the first part mentioning the location is visible. Juliet has torn off the part where George states that he has found what he was looking for but lies to Halston, saying that what he sees is all George left. She then takes him to the lowest level of the silo. She removes the board with a warning sign, and she and Halston enter a dark passageway. Juliet and Halston make their way down a set of steps and arrive in a huge chamber. She turns on the lights and reveals what she thinks is the machine that built the silo. They head down further to the base of the digger, and Juliet shows Halston the small workshop that George had built there. She brings out a box full of relics, including a camcorder, a tennis cork, and a statue of Liberty figurine. Juliet reveals that George used to visit the place and search for something, although he didn't know what. She then follows a wire by pulling at it, which she knows is connected to something. The wire brings her and Halston to the edge of a metal platform, underneath which is a water body. She keeps pulling, and up comes a bag inside, which has a hard drive and printouts of an article on how to recover lost data. Halston recognizes his wife's handwriting on the back of the document. That's when Halston tells Juliet that Allison did some work for George a few days before she went out. He has met George only once. Juliet thus realizes that Halston could guess that she and George were dating because he had seen the watch she was wearing on George's wrist. That's why he checked George's wrists at the morgue. This is why Halston followed Juliet, i.e. to find out if George had something to do with Allison going outside. Halston will have to tell the court that George's death was an accident, but Juliet is against it. She knows he was murdered, and maybe the drive will reveal why. 
After much convincing, Halston agrees to find out more about George's death and see what's in the drive, but only if she keeps quiet about it and stops wearing George's watch, which might just catch someone's eye and raise suspicion. If and when he finds something, he will send her a signal. Juliet waited and waited, and now Halston is gone. As soon as Halston leaves, Juliet lets Martha check the other half of the note that she didn't show Halston. George was looking for something more dangerous than a relic. Martha tells her to be careful because things are getting dangerous. Juliet leaves. Sam arrives at Mayor Ruth Johns's office and hands her a file containing the names of four candidates for the sheriff's position. She still has no idea who the right person will be. That's when Sam reads Halston's note to her. Ruth has no idea why Halston wanted Juliet Nichols, an engineer, to be the next sheriff. She decides to see her. Juliet is in George's workshop at the base of the digger. A look at the ropes lying nearby reminds her of the time they were both down here, and George told her about a door that lies at the end of a tunnel at the bottom of the water under the digger. She had told him that she wanted him to tell her about it only after he had found it and come back. But now, with neither George nor Halston to help her, she decides to look for the tunnel at the bottom on her own. She puts on a headlamp, ties the rope to the bolts at the edge of the platform over the water body, and uses it to climb down to the surface of the water. She is almost at the bottom when she slips but manages to prevent herself from falling. However, she loses her headlamp due to the jerk, and it falls and drowns in the water right beneath her. It is dark, and she is now stuck. Silo episode 2 ends with Juliet hanging on a rope in the dark with water beneath her. She can either climb all the way up or let go and fall into the water. The former seems like a better option, no matter how hard, because no one knows what's lurking in the dark waters. George's drive is missing. It is supposed to be with Halston. He must have seen something in the drive that made him decide to go outside. As for Juliet, we have no idea what her plan of action is. We do not know what Halston told the judicial about George or what they told him. It is possible that they confiscated the drive. Silo episode 3 will hopefully shed light on the matter. Silo doesn't waste a second establishing characters by giving each of them their own stories. Instead, it follows the plot and lets us decide who we want to trust. Also, a steady pace is maintained throughout, just like in Silo episode 1 and it holds on to our attention right till the very end and leaves us wondering what will happen next. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and I hope you enjoyed the silo story.